Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with Mikkel and Marie from Sotofte in Denmark. Mikkel was one of our early core team members who you might remember from our YouTube video back in August 2017, where he started up an epic market garden and layer flock with Anders and Katrine, who are also interns from the farm. And they already had existing beef herd and a lot's changed on the farm since then. And the gardens are now run by another couple and Mikkel and Marie have gone on to build a fully fitted dairy and run a pasture-based milking operation as well as 1,200 hens in three chicken caravans that they imported from Australia. Previously selling exclusively wholesale, this year has required a total pivot to farm pickups and private customers and then back again to wholesale within a few months. So excited to catch up and hear your story. Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. So tell us a bit about the transition, because when I was there making that video that a lot of people will have seen, you had a pretty epic startup year and a lot's changed. You've bought the neighboring farm and built a dairy, offloaded the veg. Tell us a bit about the process over the last few years. Yeah, so um, last time you visited was, I think you made a second video in 2018 which was the last season that, uh, where I, I uh, ran the vegetables, the market gun. Uh, I think we just met each other before that season, so in the end of 2017, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, um, I think I just, got fed up with vegetables and that was not what <laughs> I wanted to do. And at the same time, um, the neighbor farm uh, got up for sale. So that gave us a chance to, to start a, a grass-based dairy because that would give us enough land. Um, so, during winter 2018, I spent some time thinking about what to do with the vegetables, vegetables. And one day I called a friend and I asked if he wanted to take over and he did, but you know, he couldn't. And then I asked, but who can then take over? And he thought a bit about it and he gave me a number to a couple that I had never met. And I called them and they, uh, they, uh, yeah, within, I don't know, three weeks or something, they moved in to the community and they uh, took over the garden and are now running it as their, well, they are in the middle of their second season now and running it as their, um, their own company. And we are then working closely together around deliveries and customers. Um, so to the public, we seem like one entity with a big portfolio of dairy and eggs and, and, a, and a market garden with vegetables. Um, so sort of one farm, but within the farm, we are two separate businesses. Mm. That's pretty amazing, the, the chances of that, because you, you found someone to take over the garden. You've always had an interest in grazing and holistic management and those things. And then you met Marie, who's an cheese expert. Marie, tell us a bit about the studies you did. I mean, you've got pretty specialist knowledge in dairy and old ways of yeah. doing it, haven't you? <laughs> I actually just uh, finished my education in March this year on uh, dairy engineering. And my thesis was very much about natural fermentations and cheese cultures, uh, which I want to bring forward with this dairy project. Um, Amazing. Yeah, so I think I feel that it was a perfect match because if you want to work with raw milk cheese, you need to have the best raw milk quality that you can get. Um, yeah, and I, I thought that I were to start up a dairy in Copenhagen or something, but of course you need to be very close to the cows to get the best milk. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I think it was a good match. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
And you had that opportunity to buy the neighboring farm. That's like a once in a lifetime opportunity really to have an adjacent piece of land that's, I mean, that wouldn't come up again, would it? So that was a pretty amazing opportunity that, how much land did you get now? What's the, uh, the hectare of grazing you have now? Uh, it's close to 50 hectares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, how's that been with the, before we get on to what you're up to, tell us a bit about the arrangement with the gardeners. It's pretty amazing you found someone who can just self-manage and take that on, but what, how did you set up the arrangement with them? So uh, they had been looking for a place for about five years actually, and, um, and they are educated uh, gardeners. Um, so they, uh, we sat down and then we put a price tag on each of the investments and things that I had implemented. Um, and then um, we agreed on a price for like the full package, like all the infrastructure and all the tools and structures and so on. Um, and then, and then they are then leasing the, the land uh, through us and we are leasing it from a foundation. Again. <laughs> <laughs> so the family foundation that's, that owns the whole farm that people will have seen, you're leasing the farmland of them and they're leasing it of you. Yeah. So they essentially bought out the assets for the market garden and then rent the lands. Yeah. And so that's perfect. That's taken that off you but it also has a complementary product still that's that your customers already knew and enjoyed already so definitely yeah so it was it was very um well i wouldn't say it was very easy but it was a you know it was just about getting the seeds in the ground and there was already a you know a list of customers that could be contacted and, and that knew the product and what we were doing so um yeah the, i mean the sales i had already built up as a, a channel for sales so um yeah tell us a bit about this year then because most people have just seen a big rise in in private customers but you've had to pivot from totally wholesale to totally private and back again in a few months which is pretty unusual i guess yeah yeah, so when, um, when our prime minister, she, well, it actually starts before that because the weeks up until Denmark closed down, uh, we got more and more word about the situation because we were obviously totally aware of uh, that our sales, you know, might disappear very soon. Uh, and then she went on our prime minister, she went on television and she, uh, it was a Wednesday evening and she closed down the country from that Friday. Um, and she, she uh, closed down, you know, all restaurants and everything. Um, so we just had to do something very quickly. And, and on and in reference, you got like a thousand eggs a day piling up, right? And <laughs> yeah, at that time we, it was a thousand eggs a day, and how many, much milk? One hundred and twenty liters. One hundred and twenty, and we had a lot of eggs in stock, actually. Yeah. So it was. We had a at that time we had a bit of an overproduction, so we had been piling up mm -hmm. eggs for three weeks probably. So we had a, around twenty thousand eggs standing at the farm <laughs> and well that is worth a lot of money and we definitely don't have a bin that's big enough to throw them <laughs> out so like what are we gonna do and we sat down and talked about it and um, we decided to make a, a video that we posted on Facebook where we explained our situation that all our customers were forced to close and we had all these, these 20,000 eggs in stock and we, you know, we basically gave them away for free. So we, we charged one Danish crowner an egg 
which, which is, is what like a third of um, or a quarter of what you normally sell for less than a quarter okay so it's it's 0.13 euros an egg wow which is basically for free yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's cheaper than you buy a conventional egg for in the supermarket probably but we thought it would be necessary to get rid of them and we definitely did get rid of them because okay. we posted the video on facebook sunday evening and when we woke up monday morning it had already been shared like a few hundred times and lots of comments and you know and okay and then during the so what we said in the video was that we would open like a drive-in um, farm shop monday afternoon from three to five but already during the morning people start coming down the road and wanted to buy eggs and the phone was called you know, ringing all the time yeah. with journalists and people who want to buy a thousand eggs and you know a thousand eggs Okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they were so cheap, so they saw an opportunity <laughs> to make business themselves, so they wanted to resell them. And it was not only people from the local area, it was <laughs> the whole of Denmark, like oh, yeah, yeah. Jutland, as far as you can go from here, who wanted to come and buy many yeah. eggs, yeah. So a lot of support also for like people understanding that that was a bit of a crisis point with restaurants yeah, being shut down was, suddenly. But also just very cheap eggs. We experienced that many people were wanted to talk and you know see who are we, but also a lot of people just wanted to have you know cheap eggs because it was a pretty good offer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, I and I guess that paved the way for you know that's a, a big open door now to then be able to sell privately. Definitely. For the rest totally. of the season, and it also because we we uh, because we reacted so quickly, we were probably some of the first in Denmark to bring forward a story of uh, how we were uh, adapting adapting to this new situation. So yeah. there was you know national TV. They came and made a long. Uh, you know, and uh, several newspapers, and I think we were in five different uh, medias. So it, it, uh, you know, it was very cheap marketing Definitely. money that we, you know, um, we, yeah. we didn't earn anything on the X, but we really got good marketing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we didn't <laughs> thought about that actually in the beginning. We just didn't want to throw any X. Sure. Yeah. And then. So then then very quickly, you know, there were we had a we had a car line that was four hundred meters long, with people <laughs> wanting to buy these eggs, and and uh, many many people had to go empty-handed back home. So we decided that we wanted to make like a pre-order system, and we the first time we did it was on Facebook, and Marie spent the whole day just receiving messages and answering. An office woman. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so that was, you know, not realistic to continue that way. So within the first week, I think we uh, managed to build and launch a website where people could go and, and, and buy what they wanted and then come and pick it up two times a week where they would park the car and say the name. And then we would put what they bought in the back of the car and then they could drive away again. So we yeah. minimized uh, physical contact. Mm. And that was, I mean, that basically saved our, our company because we've, later we looked at our numbers and from the budget that we did in autumn 2019, we've only gone 8% down in sales. Amazing. That time, so, and you know, many many companies they suffered ninety, ninety five, ninety nine yeah. percent loss in turnover now. So. Oh, well done! Amazing.